Hello and welcome back to another video. This is going to be episode 3 for building the Imperial Communications Base in LEGO. This week there's going to be a lot of progress on the front section of the mock, uh, with the terrain and mountain and bunker and that kind of stuff. And there's also going to be a nice little time lapse for some of the mountain. And there is going to be a little bit of a resolution to one of the halls from last week. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. All right, so you guys might remember from last episode, one of the stores that I ordered from gave me uh, the incorrect color of the cheese grater slopes. They gave me regular orange and I ordered dark orange. So I reached out to the seller and uh, they said they would send me the replacement parts. And here we have the package that they sent me. So I'm gonna go ahead, open this one up and make sure it is what I ordered. All right, there we go. It looks like this is actually 
the correct thing. We got the uh, cheese grater slopes, some packing peanuts, and one grill tile. I went through and counted everything in the order to make sure they sent me everything and I was missing one grill tile. But other than that, it looks like they did replace the parts. Um, so no complaints there. And uh, yeah, let's get back to building. Okay, so I've done a lot more progress since the end of that time lapse. I touched up a few things and just overall did a lot more. So pretty much now one green base plate of the mountain is done. Um, I have up to, you can kind of see here, this is pretty much where this green base plate ends. Um, I have textured a little bit of this too and the mountain up here is not completely where it should be. This needs to be filled in, um, but I'm gonna have some dark orange and medium flesh kind of going around the top, uh, similar to this little area, which I'm really happy about. This was, um, this is something I've never done before, but I thought it kind of made sense. This is like a little section of the mountain that kind of comes out and then uh, just, it's like a little shelf type area. And then the dirt that kind of just gets caught in there is just chilling right there. And then it just goes back into the gray. So I'm really happy with that. Um, I think I executed that pretty nicely. So I might start doing that a little bit more. Um, I might have one or two little uh, smaller patches kind of like this. This one took me a really long time to do. There's a lot of complex angles in there. As you can see, this slope right here and this one up top are angled and connected with a sausage piece. Um, you might remember that from the time lapse, but that was interesting. And then here we also have a nice cheese slope uh, coming in right there. And then there's a lot of weird stuff going on right here to get this wedge to fit in there and kind of have the medium flesh go around the bottom and make it look nice. And then on the edge, this is new here. I do have this slope coming in here and it's met at the bottom with a half plate inset of cheese slopes. So that was interesting, a little bit difficult to achieve, but I think it looks pretty cool. And then here we also have a nice section of another cheese slope there and then just a nice little cross section type area similar to what we have at the texturing on the bottom. So bring this down here, can zoom out a little bit. So I did do this little section here of texturing. Um, you can see obviously it is primarily dark orange and there's a nice little uh, edge bordering the dark gray into the dark orange of medium flesh. Really like how that looks, um, definitely adds a nice effect to the rest of it. Obviously here we still have the lava um, textured up this little dark gray section here. Looks pretty nice. I did also do this section over here. Here we have some more of the texturing in the dark gray section. And then obviously a little bit of the medium flesh kind of going all around. And then it gets kind of lost out of focus out here, but I kind of want to keep this section a little bit uh, secretive. Just focus on the rocks for right now. Obviously, we still got the lights, they still work. Um, so that's pretty cool. So I guess we can kind of just bring it over and zoom out a little bit. And that is pretty much what the mountain looks like. I really actually like how it turned out. Um, well, how it is turning out, I'm not done with it. Um, but you can see this time around, I wanted to make it look a little bit more natural. So I have, um, I guess just picking this section right here, for example, but you have kind of all the slopes in the surrounding area going upwards. And then here we can see them starting to transition to going inverted. And then up here, a little bit of a nice little rounded section. And then they all kind of go inwards again and then come outwards a little bit and then back inwards. And then at the top, they will go outwards again. Um, you can kind of see that all around the mountain. That's really what I was aiming for. I think it definitely makes it look a lot more natural. Definitely very happy with this, but now we can go ahead and move on to one of my favorite parts of the mock, and that would be the bunker implementation. 
So the first thing I want to highlight is these grills. I spent a really long time trying to get them to fit in perfectly. As you can see, this is where I used the um, cheese grater slopes in dark orange that I got from that order. The seller corrected it for me, so that was really nice. Um, so I did get to use those, really happy about that. But even with those, I thought you could kind of just place them in there, you know, you attach some brackets, everything lines up perfectly. Um, that did not happen. So basically the only way I was able to do this was with these, you can kind of see here. Let me pop one out. These panels in dark orange. I originally, when I was building this mock, I didn't even know these existed. Um, I just got lucky that one of the stores I was ordering from had them. So I definitely lucked out there. I would not have been able to build this without them. So basically the way I did it was I just put all of the um, cheese grater slopes in here, got some brackets as you can see, and some plates and bricks and just did a bunch of random stuff. And then wherever stuff didn't line up, I slapped a panel and you can see one here. Now I will zoom out. So you can see all of them together. You can see this one is not angled at all. This one here is angled kind of this way with all of those cheese graters. And then this one here is angled in the opposite way. Um, you can see this section here. This was really hard to do because none of this could be connected. Um, there's just nothing to connect it to. You can see these two uh, cheese graters are back to back. So that was definitely annoying to figure out, but I did figure it out, so I'm happy about that. Um, and then you can see a bunch of panels. So there's one here, and there's another one here, and there's two here. Um, but one thing that I actually really liked that I wasn't planning on having was the slight elevation differences. And here you can kind of see the elevation differences that I was talking about, especially with this one here and this one. Um, just really adds a lot to the texturing. And the next and last part, this was so rewarding, but challenging to do. Um, as you could probably see, I have implemented the bunker into the final mock. This is where it's going to sit. Um, I did actually widen it to studs. You can see here, there's now a two by four tile in there. So the stormtrooper has more room on either side. This was actually brought up to me by Jan the Creator, so go check him out. Um, definitely like this a lot more. He's not cramped in there or anything like that. Um, but basically, the problem with the bunker is its side walls are angled. So I had to come up with some pretty interesting techniques to try and get this integrated. So as you can see, I first um, made this little triangular section here with brackets and gray cheese graters. And then I kind of slapped that up against the wall and it wasn't flat. You can see this is angled. So then I did a couple interesting things. I decided that this crack was acceptable because I have a few other like wedge kind of cracks in the rock work. So I kind of just went with that. I put in this mountain slope here some other things to kind of uh, smooth it out. And then on top here, this little build here actually came in clutch because it gave me this connection point right here. And then you have this little headlight brick with the tile on it. And then you have another tile here. And then this little thing, I'm not really sure how evident it is in there, but that little sliver right there is actually a road sign that is connected in the back by a bunch of weird bars and stuff like that. So that fills out that gap really nicely. And then here we have a cheese grater that matches the angle here. That also lines up perfectly. So now at this point, I should be able to kind of just resume normal rock work on top. Hopefully this whole section kind of just blends in with the rest of the mountain. But as of right now, I actually kind of like this um, you can see little gaps through there, but obviously once I put the filler in there, there won't be any gaps. You won't be able to see anything like that. So that is how I molded this side of the bunker into the mountain. And that took me a really long time. 
But the other thing that I realized was the lights that I already have in the mock are going to be pulsing for the lava. And I didn't want the lights in the bunker to be um, the same flashing type of thing as the lava. That just wouldn't really make sense. So what I ended up having to do was I grabbed another string of lights. You can kind of see it's on top here. I grabbed another string of lights that I just had lying around. But the reason I wasn't planning on using these is because they are actually yellow. So I was originally planning on just having, you know, trans clear and the white lights behind it, just some white. But because they were yellow, um, me and Daniel actually kind of came up with this together is we are gonna be using trans light blue in front of the yellow lights. And it gives this really cool greenish bluish color that I actually really like. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the lights right now like that and we can kind of zoom in on those lights there and you can see I have these little runners um, with grill tiles kind of going along the floor you can actually take this dude out of the way I really like how that looks got a nice little tube looking thing going there too but I just I really really do like how this looks um, I'm gonna try and move the camera so you get a little bit of a better look so this is kind of what it looks like in the actual hallway. It is a little bit hard to look in there, but you can kind of see the lights there and then the wedges here. Got an officer just walking through, but I just, I really, really like this. Like I was not planning on having this bluish kind of light, but now that it's in there, I'm just really happy that it actually happened that way because it's such a cool, um, contrast to the white lights that'll be in the rest of the base just having these bluish green runners at the bottom and then in the actual hangar part of the base it'll all be just nice clear white lights it's just something I wasn't planning on but now that it's in there I'm super happy but that is pretty much everything for this update I did get a lot of progress done but I didn't really get enough done, I think. Um, I still obviously here have to put a green base plate and then obviously there's two gray in the back. So I definitely need to pick up the pace, knock all this out. I wanna have almost all of the mock done by next Wednesday, which is the first day of brick fair. And then you have Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday to kind of put on some finishing touches to your mock. So I'm gonna. that's why I'm gonna leave all this texturing here unfinished because that's stuff I can do at Brick Fair. It doesn't take much time. It doesn't take any figuring out. You just kind of slap on plates and stuff like that. So I definitely want to finish up all of the mountain here while I'm at my, uh, at my house in my room with all of my parts. So I definitely need to finish all of the mountain by next week. And I want to do most of the hangar part because that's stuff I could do at Brick Fair, but I also want it to be done because that's just, that's just a lot of stuff that I don't really want to have to be trying to time crunch to finish. So that is pretty much the plan here. But other than that, this is pretty much what the mock looks like. Got the nice blue lights here inside the bunker. And then obviously you still have the lights going for the lava. I'm just really, really liking how this mock is turning out. With all that said, Let's get to the outro. All right, guys, that is going to wrap up episode three of building the Imperial Communications Base in LEGO. I probably didn't get enough progress done to make the deadline of next Wednesday, so I'm definitely gonna focus more on trying to build fast rather than, you know, taking my time, making sure everything is perfect, just try and get everything done. So I'm not sure what's gonna happen next week for the next episode. That's either going to be just posted on Wednesday um, normally, or it's going to just happen after Brick Fair, like a week late, pretty much. Um, but either way, that's going to be probably the finale, and it's going to be pretty much the full finished mock, because I need to pretty much get this thing done by next Wednesday. I have a little bit of a grace period at Brick Fair, but I'd rather not have to spend time building there. And also, like, I'm not going to be able to bring my entire collection 
So it's probably better to just get everything finished here and I have to worry about that. But anyways, thank you guys very much for watching and I will see you guys in the next video. Goodbye. Thank you.